Okay, cool. Welcome to your session number eight, which is our last session before your exam preparation, before you go write your exams. So you all, all know what um, which date you need to be here on a Monday based on your timetable, your exam timetable. I think we start with BNU and then the last, the other Monday, then it will be QMI. Okay, so today's session, we're going to be looking at uh, the basic skills on how to solve different types of equations. I'm going to rush through because there are different types of equations. And I hope here yeah, we do have, I, I just want to have an, a, a feel. Do we have anyone doing QMI? Yes, we do. Yes, we are here. So wait, let me see. Uh, let me go back there because it's very important to know who is, how many people are only doing BNU? Only BNU. Nobody. So you both you, some of you are doing BNU and you're also doing QMI. That that is good, uh, because most of the things we're going to be discussing now are related to QMI mostly than the BNU. The first part of the session will be based on the um, QM, uh, BNU as well as QMI, but at the later stage we will move into the QMI space when we're solving different types of equations. I'm not even going to ask you if you have any questions or comments for today because I will have to sprint. So by the end of the session today, you should learn how to manipulate an equation, how to change a subject of the formula. We've been doing the changing of the subject of the formula almost every week now, but I just want to also um, uh, introduce that concept again. You should be able to solve linear equations. And yeah, I'm talking about one linear equation, and you should be able to solve two simultaneous linear equations to solve inequality equation, quadratic equation, I forgot to mention there, quadratic equations and simultaneous inequality equation. As you can see that the list is long and we only have one hour, 30 minutes. So, first of all, when you manipulate equation, that's the base of everything you do in math. In math, we try to manipulate an equation and we know that when manipulating an equation, for example, if I have to solve for x in this equation, then it means I must make x the subject of the formula or x must be alone on the left-hand side or on the right-hand side. It must just be on its own. We can apply different methods. What you do on the left, you must do on the right. If I subtract on the left, I must also subtract on the right. If I multiply on the left, I must also multiply on the right. If I divide on the left, I must also divide on the right. If I add on the left, I must also add on the right. Or sometimes you don't even have to use whatever you do on the left, you do on the right. When you are subtracting or addition, when the, the value that is adding or subtracting and it needs to move across the equal sign because this is an equality sign if it needs to move to the equal side side uh, the other side of the equal sign then the sign will change if it was minus or it will become plus if it was plus it will become minus if it is multiplying or dividing then it's different if it's multiplying we, if, to get rid of that value, we divide. If it is dividing to get rid of that value, we, di we multiply by that value. And you will see when we do some act activities now. So in order for us to solve this X, we need to make sure that X is on its own. And we're going to apply the method, whatever I do on the left, I do on the right. So I have seven on this side, which does not have an X, so it needs to move across um, the equal sign. So whatever I do on the left, I must do on the right. To get rid of seven, I must subtract seven on both sides. Subtract seven on the left, subtract seven on the right. Seven and seven plus seven minus seven will be equals to zero. Therefore, on the left hand side, I will be left with four X. And on the right hand side, 23 minus seven is 16. 
Now, 4 is multiplying with an x, and you remember, if it's multiplying, to get rid of that value, we divide. So it means we're going to divide by 4 on the left-hand side, but we must also divide by 4 on the right-hand side. And <clears throat> 4 and 4 will cancel out. You will be left with x, and uh, 4 goes 4 times into 16. Therefore, our x is equal to 4, and that's how you manipulate the equation, and you can validate this because this is an equality side, it says whatever is on the left should be the same as whatever I have on the right. On the right, I have 23. On the left, I have 4x plus 7. So I must make sure that 4x plus 7 is the same as 23. So I'm, I can take this 4. You don't have to do this method. You can take this x is equal to 4, substitute it back into the equation of 4x plus 7 so that we can check if the equation balances out. So we're going to substitute where we see x, we, we put 4, uh, and then it will be 4 multiplied by 4 plus 7, and that will be equals to 23. Therefore, it means the equation balances out, and that is an extra st uh, step that you can use, but it's not necessary. If you're given this kind of a question in the exam or in your assignment, and you need to answer this question, but always remember the BOTMAS rule as well because we are solving and manipulating equations and using the basic operations as well. BOTMAS says brackets first, so we need to remove the bracket. So what you do first is to remove this bracket. So 2 multiply by 2y, it's 4y. 2 multiply by minus 1, we distribute 2 into the bracket which is minus 2, and we just write the equation as we see it for minus y. <clears throat> because I only need to solve the equation and I look at my option, it says I must find an, an answer which says y is equal to, so therefore it means I am solving for y. So it means everything that has an y must go to the other side. So I'm not going to use whatever I do on the left, I do on the right. I'm going to move things across the equal sign. So I'll start with the 2 to move it over. So that will be 4y minus 3y. And I can see that we have a y on this side and a y this side is negative. When I move it across the equal side, this is my equal side. When I move it across, because it's minus, it's going to be a plus y equals 4. I have minus 2 this side. When I move it across, it will be plus 2, and I can solve the equation. 4, 4y minus 3y is y plus y is 2y. 4 plus 2 is 6, and I'm looking for y, not 2y, so therefore I'm going to divide this side by 2, and whatever I do on this side, I must do on the other side. 2 and 2 cancels out, you left with y, and 2 goes 1 time into 2, and it goes 3 times into 6, and therefore you have y is equal to 3, which is option 2, and that's how you will manipulate equations. I'm not, unfortunately, I can't give you exercises to do, because like I said, I'm going to sprint. So that's how you manipulate equations. How do we change the subject of the formula? Changing the subject of the formula means we need to move one variable to be on its own, like we had one variable as such, uh, the variable y. Come on. Like we had the variable y on its own on the left-hand side, that's the aim of changing the subject of the formula. Our formula at this point is v is equals to u plus a t. And we want to make u the subject of the formula because we are given v, we are given a, we are given t. And therefore, it means we need to calculate u so we can move u to the left-hand side. So moving u to the left-hand side because u is my, it's adding on, it's got a positive sign on the left-hand side, on the right-hand side. If I move it, I must subtract I must subtract u from both sides. So I subtract u from this side. From the left-hand side, I must also do the same on the right-hand side. 
and then I get V minus U, and then U and U will cancel out on my right hand side, and the only um, answer I have is AT. And then I'm interested in U, not V minus U, so I'm going to move V as well to the right hand side. So to move V, because V is plus, so I must subtract V this side, I must also subtract V on the right hand side. And the answer will have its minus u is equals to 80 minus v. I'm not looking for minus u, I'm looking for positive u. So to get rid of a negative, a negative u. So a negative u is the same as negative 1 times u because with a 1, we don't write it. It's the same thing as u divided by 1. We don't write it, we write it as u. So the same thing. 1 has no, you, you don't have to show the value of 1 in some cases. For example, as well, u to the power of 1, we don't write it as u to the power of 1, we just write it as u. So these are those circumstances that you ne always need to remember when you are manipulating your equations as well. So we're going to multiply by negative 1. So we multiply, or you can say you are dividing by negative 1, it will still work out the same. So multiplying by negative 1 will negative times negative becomes positive. And because we're multiplying everything on the left, so you need to make sure that you put it into brackets and not only multiply the first one that you see, it also has to multiply the, all the variables that you have. So we put it into bracket and multiply by negative, and therefore we need to remove the bracket, then it becomes minus 80, negative times negative is positive, then it's positive V. Or we can rewrite this as U is equals to V minus 80. So you can still rewrite it. Look at your options. If your options are rewritten, you can rewrite them as well. There is no harm as long as you use the right signs and you don't drop anything. You don't change the value of the equation. And that's how you manipulate an equation. Let's look at an example. If P is equals to M squared minus X divided by 2, make X the subject of the formula. We can see where X is at is there. So in order for us to make X the subject of the formula, let me rewrite this equation, m squared minus x divided by 2, so I can move minus x divided by 2 to the left hand side, and it will be, because it's negative, it will be positive x over 2, and m and p, m squared, p is positive this side, when I move it across, it will be minus p. Now, I'm not looking for x over 2. I'm looking for x as a subject of the formula. And therefore, I can also say I'm going to multiply this side by 2. Therefore, it means I must multiply also on the other side by 2. A bracket means multiplication as well. 2 and 2 will cancel out. We will be left with x. And I can just distribute my 2 into the bracket. That will be 2m squared minus 2p, which one is the correct answer, which is number one. That's how you will manipulate the equation. Maybe when we have enough time at the end, I do have some extra additional exercises at the end that we can go through. And that is how you manipulate, you change the subject of the formula. Any question? I'm going to allow questions from here before we move on to the next Are there any questions? Is that easy to do? Clear? Uh, very okay. clear. Very clear. Thank you. Okay. Now we're going to look at how we manipulate linear equations. So <clears throat> linear equations are like your straight lines. Um, so we're going to look at how we manipulate those equations. In terms of linear equation, you should be able to know how to draw this, the, the straight line based on the linear equation. 
you should be able to calculate the slope and you should be able to determine the equation of a straight line, which is your linear function, if given two points. To draw a straight line, you also just need two points, and the point is made up of two coordinates. So to draw a straight line, you just need two points, and a point is made up of coordinates. So one point is made up of coordinate X and Y, and the other point you will need to have the coordinate X and Y. And that is why we say you need only two points, and this one will be X1, Y1 corresponding to one another, and X2 corresponds to Y2. When you have the two points, you can draw on a Cartesian plane, you can put the two points and connect the two points and draw a straight line. And this will be your straight line. Y is equals to AX plus B, which will be our straight line. And that is all what we're going to be doing. In terms of the slope, we're just going to calculate the change in that value and the change in this value. So we're going to look at the change in the value of Y divided by the change in the value of X, because this is your X1, and x2, and this is your y1 uh, and y2. So we're going to take those to calculate the slope, and we can also calculate this equation of a straight line, which is y is equals to ax plus b. Okay, so how do we do that? If we have two points, uh, one, x is of one and y of four, which is my first point. I can relabel this as x1 and y1 coordinate. And I can relabel this as x2 and y2 points. I can then plot them on this Cartesian plane. As you can see there, my point one, where x is one, y is four, and that is my point. Where x is four and y is two, that will be my point, and I join the straight line. Uh, I drew the straight line on this, and this graph passes through some points on the y-axis and the x-axis. Based on the slope, or based on this graph, I should be able to tell what type of a slope this is, whether this slope is descending or ascending. Those are the things that you also need to know, especially when you are doing BNU and QMI as well. Some questions, they might ask you those. So this graph, we say, because of the way it looks, it states that when the values of X are increasing, the values of Y are decreasing. So this is a descending slope or a negative slope or a downhill slope. If you have a slope, oh, sorry, not like that, like that, it means when the values of X are increasing, the values of Y are also increasing. And this we say it is an ascending slope, it is a positive slope, and it is also an upward slope. And you also get slopes that looks like this, which are constant slopes. They do not have any influence because the value of X stays constant when the value of, sorry, the value of y stays constant when the value of x changes. Or you can have a graph that point like this, where it means the value of y changes and the value of x stay constant, and that there is no uh, slope. The slope there will be equals to zero. Okay, so you need to know all those definition of the slope as well. But we can also calculate the value of a slope because a slope can be calculated using the formula. Since we know that the slope is the ratio of the change in the values of Y to the change in the values of X. So it's your, because we do have two points where X1 and Y1 and x2 and y2, we can find the slope by substituting the value of y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. And that is the change 
that we are calculating there. So let's calculate the slope of this following. To calculate the slope of uh, the line or the straight line that passes through these two points, point 0 and 10 and point 5 and 0, we can label both of our points. So point 1 will be x1, y1, 0 and 10, and point 2 will be x2, y2 will be 5 and 0. And then we can then substitute into the formula and find the slope, calculate and find the slope because y2 is 0, y1 is 10, so it will be 0 minus 10. The equation has a negative there, right? If this value was negative, if 10 was negative, you must put it into bracket and put the minus 10 on there. So you must also be wary of that when you do some calculations. <clears throat> Substituting x2 is 5, x1 is 0, so it will be 5 minus 0. 0 minus 10 is minus 10, 5 minus 0 is 5, and we can still simplify this because it's a fraction. We need to simplify it to the simplest form. 5 can divide into 10, it goes 2 times, therefore the answer will be negative 5, and therefore the slope for this point is negative 2. And this is a negative slope, therefore it means the slope of this graph, if we had to plot this graph, it would have been a negative downhill um, descending slope. Now, when it comes to QMI, if we need to find the equation of a straight line using the same point, let's assume that we're going to use the same point 0 and 10. Let me write them down, 0 and 10 and 5 and 0. So let's go find the equation of a straight line and the equation of a straight line, we can define it as y is equals to b x plus a or y is equals to a x plus b. It depends on how you write your equation. So depending on your book, how they define it. So there is always the B will be your slope uh, and your A will be the intercept. And some equation is Y is equals to AX plus B where B is your intercept and A is your slope. So the value that multiplies next to the X is your slope. It is the value that we just calculated. So let's calculate this. So to determine the equation of this straight line that goes through the point 0 and 10, <clears throat> we can also define our points because it's very important to uh, go forward in terms of how we're going to plot them into the equation as well. <clears throat> so to do that, we first calculate the slope. Oh, sorry. We first calculate the slope. We did calculate what the slope is. If I'm using my equation, the slope we calculated it, it was minus 2b. Remember that? The slope is this one that we calculated here because I'm using the same point. I'm not going to come back and calculate it again. So the slope is 2. So I can go back to my equation, which is y is equals to bx plus a and substitute my value of my slope, which is minus 2x plus a. And I can choose any of the two points to substitute into the value of x and the value of y because I do have my x and y. When I do that, I need to make sure that I don't take the value that is too big, like 10 and 5, one of them is big. I must stay away from negative numbers. I must stay away from fractions. But if they are all there on the point, you need to just make a decision and choose one. What I'm trying to say is, when you're given two points, choose the points that is the easiest to substitute and calculate. Don't choose the one that is more complex. So I'm going to choose X2 and y2 to substitute into this. So it means everywhere where I see x, I'm going to put 5. Where I see y, I'm going to put 0. So my y is 0 equals to minus 2 times my x of 5 plus a. 
making A the subject of the formula means I must move A to the other side. Oh, I can leave it to the right hand side. When you're working with the equality sign, it doesn't really matter whether you leave your subject of the formula on the left or on the right. So I can leave A on this side. So the answer here will be zero minus two times five is minus 10 plus A. And I can move 10 to the other side and therefore it becomes positive because that is zero. It means nothing. And the answer here will be A is equals to 10. Or I can write it as A is equals to 10. I can rewrite it because it's an e equality sign. It only works when you doing equal uh, when you have an equal sign. When we get later on, please, please, please move the value to the left. Always move it to the left when we do the inequalities. And now I have my intercept. Intercept is the value that passes through the y-axis, where x is equal to zero the value of y will be the same as the value of a. So now I have my a, I can then complete my equation of a straight line because that is what they said. The only value I need to substitute is b and a. y and x stays as they are. So y is equals to, and my b, we did calculate it, was minus 2x, and my a, plus 10, and that is the equation of a straight line as it is, and it's right there. I'm going to use the same math, uh, the same question or example to do the same equation of a straight line, but from the BNU perspective. So QMI, you use this formula. That's what is in your study guide. You use y is equals to ax plus b or y is equals to bx plus a or y is equals to mx plus c. That is the formula that you use to calculate or find the equation of a straight line. For b and u, to find the equation of a straight line, which is the same as what we have, y is equals to bx plus a, we are going to use the same point, but your equation of a straight line is defined as such. So this will give you the equation of a straight line. So what does that mean? It means you don't even have to go and calculate the slope, whereas with the QMI, before you calculate the equation of a straight line, you need to first calculate your slope, then substitute, choose two points and substitute in order to get there. In BNU, you don't have to do that. You use this formula, y minus y1 divide by x minus x1 equals to y2 minus y1 divide by x2 minus x1. We know what our points are and we have defined them before, right? We know that our first point is 0 and 10, and our second point is 5 and 0. Where we see x1, y1, we substitute them onto the formula. Where we see x2 and y2, we substitute the values on there. So let's go on and substitute. Our y1 is 10, and our x1 is 0. So that is why right on the left-hand side, we substitute like that. And I'm not going to talk about this side because this is the slope equation that we calculated previously. We know how to substitute that. Now, we need to solve this. Before we solve this, we can solve the right-hand side because those are numbers. And this side, we've got variables again. So let's solve the numbers. We know that the slope gave us minus 2 when we solved this previously. So it's minus 2. In order for us to get rid of x minus 0, because it's dividing here at the bottom, so this is the same as x, so we can multiply by x on this side, or we can take both of it and multiply, but this will still remain <coughs> 0, and then we take minus 10 to the other side. Let's move it one step back. So we know that 2 times x is minus 2x, 2 times 0, minus 2 times 0 will be plus 0, which means this value 
yeah, will just be minus 2 plus 0, which is the same as minus 2x. And if we have y, y minus 10 is equals to minus 2x. All what we need to do is move 10 to the other side. It's positive. And the answer we get will be y is equals to minus 2x plus 10, which is the same as what we got previously. So you can either use both of them. So in the exam, you can use both of them to save time. You can use this method if you are doing QMI. But you need to know the equation. This is the equation to find the equation of a straight line. Are there any questions? If there are no questions, let's look at this. Determine the equation of a straight line that passes through these two points, and they give us the equation of a straight line. Oh, that is our option. So we need to determine that. I'm going to do it two ways. I'm going to start with the QMI. So the first step is to find, let's assume that in this instance, we're going to use a, Y is equals to AX plus B. So therefore we need to find A first. So A is equals to Y2 minus Y1 divided by X2 minus X1. So substituting into the formula, we need to come back and define this. So this is our X1 y1, x2, y2. y2 is minus 6, y1 minus minus 2 because it's minus 2 and our equation has a minus in between. So I must also keep that minus. x2 is 5 minus x1 is 3. minus 6 minus minus 2 so it will be minus 6 plus 2 divided by 2, which will be equals to, oh, I can write it just here, which will be equals to minus 2 plus 2, it's minus 4, divided by 2, it's minus 2, right? Am I calculating it right? I'm calculating it by by heart. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That is minus two. So since we have minus two, so we can determine now. Um, we can rewrite the equation. So I'm going to write it here. So our equation is y is equals to ax plus b. So we can substitute back this equation there. So we have minus two x plus b, which is still missing, so we need to find B. We need to choose any of the two. Stay away from big numbers, so I can see that this one has smaller numbers than this one, so I can choose X1, so I'm going to use that one to substitute because this one has big numbers. They both have negative numbers, right? But this one, the numbers are smaller than those ones. So where we see Y, we're going to put minus 2. Where we see X, we're going to put 3 plus b minus 2 minus 2 times 3 it's minus 6 plus b and moving minus 6 to the other side minus 2 plus 6 is equals to b and therefore b is equals to minus uh -uh, b is equals to 4 because it's minus 2 my, uh, plus 6 so it takes the sign of the bigger number Therefore, our equation of a straight line is y is equals to our a of minus 2x plus 4, so which is option 4. So let's do the, this is QMI, right? I need to always remind you that. Let's do the BNU one. So BNU. We say y minus y1 divided by x minus x1 is equals to y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. I'm not going to do this step again because I, I don't, I'm not going to substitute these values again because I know we've calculated it. So you will substitute, you will substitute these values 
on your step. So I'm not going to do that because we calculated it. It's minus two and I can just substitute the values on the left hand side, which is minus X one uh, Y one. We're going to use Y one. It's minus two divided by X minus minus three because we're using Y one and X one. So we can take this value and multiply it on the other side as well. So we'll be left with plus 2 is equal to minus 2 times x minus 3. And we can simplify this whole thing. Minus 2 times x is minus 2x. Minus 2 times minus 3 is plus 6. Y plus 2 y is equals to moving 2 to the other side we are left with 2x plus 6 minus 2 because it's positive when it comes over it becomes negative and you left with y is equals to minus 2x 6 minus 2 it's four plus 4 and as you can see this is BNU one five oh one. You can find the same answer doing using two different methods as well. And that is linear equations. I hope we're still right on track. Oh, yes, we are. Yeah. Now let's look at how we solve simultaneous equation unless if you have a question because the way i'm flying i'm sprinting i'm like uh usain bolt usain bolt <laughs> the way i'm sprinting yeah. and if you don't ask and let me explain again you will get lost so moving to the next session section going to look at simultaneous equations so with simultaneous equations, it means they give you two systems of linear equations. And you can use two methods to do that. You can use the method of substitution or the method of elimination. You choose the one that you feel comfortable with because different people solve problems differently. Me, I prefer the method of substitution. Others prefer the method of elimination because it's quick and easy. But you need to choose and decide which one works best for you because at the end of the day, when you are writing your exam, you want to save up on more, uh, your time as well. So how do we solve equation of a simultaneous equation? So remember now with linear equation, oh, now I'm drawing different graph. So remember with Simultaneous equations. So if this is our y, come on, pen, don't disappoint me. This is our Cartesian plane where we have our x and y, and in the middle there is zero. So with simultaneous equation, there are two, two straight lines. So let's say one straight line goes like this, and the other straight line goes like this. With simultaneous equation, we want to find this point, the point where both of these two equations, y is equals to mx plus c, and let's, let's call this y is equals to mx, let's call this minus mx, because the slope here is negative, so it means the value here in front of m is negative. This one, the slope is positive, and this one, our C on this one is positive, so that is why it passes through the positive side of Y, and this one, it passes through the, let's not use MX, let's use AXB, AX minus B, because it passes through a negative Y, so this side is negative Y, this side is negative X. So those two lines, they pass each other at some point, and at that point, on, it is that point. That's the purpose of simultaneous equation. We want to determine at what point these two equations are passing through each other. They are cutting each other through. 
Okay, so let's get to that. Sorry, yes. Hello? Yes. Your, your screen is too long. I was going to say we lost your screen. You lost my screen. Yeah. Okay, so I was explaining to myself. Is Let's get it back. I don't know why it disappeared. Um. Okay, I don't know where I lost you, and I think these things happen almost with my every presentation. Okay, so what I was explaining in terms of this Cartesian plane, we have two lines. We have this line, which is this line, y is equals to minus mx plus c. I was explaining that one, minus mx plus c because our slope of this one is negative is declining but our c which is our y intercept it is positive so that is our c because the graph passes through the y the y axis at that point and i was also explaining that this line y is equals to ax minus b because the slope is positive therefore it means a will be positive but our y-intercept passes through the y-axis in the negative side, on the negative side of the y-axis. So that is why my b there is negative, right? I'm saying, when we solve simultaneous linear equation, we are trying to find this point where both of these two lines pass each other. And we want to find this point, which has x and y coordinates. That is the point of simultaneous equations. So given 2x plus 5y is equals to 12 and 4x minus y is equals to 2, let's solve this simultaneous equation. And it says I must plot the graph. I might not I plot the graph because I'm in a marathon. So you can plot the graph because the graph will be the same way as you plot the graph when you have your linear equations and i didn't show you when you have any linear equation how do you plot your graph but we will get to that it's fine uh we will need we just need two points so we'll have the c and the point that we are having and then i can just show you how to plot it it's gonna be easy so with method of substitution which is the first one that we're going to use what you need to do is to label your plot. So this is graph, uh, we're gonna call it equation number one, and this is equation number two. Because we're doing the process of substitution, so it means we need to take one equation and substitute it into the other equation. Looking at these two equations, I must take the one which looks simple, and equation two looks simple. So I'm going to say, change, equation 2 into y is equals to ax plus b. That's what we know most. We know how to do that. So let's do that. We have 4x minus y is equals to 2. We're going to move 4 to the other side. Minus y is equals to, I'm going to, it's positive, so it moves this side. It becomes uh, minus 4x and plus two, because I'm trying to rewrite it the same way as they have it. So I'm going to multiply by a negative number this side. Therefore, it means I must multiply by a negative number that side. Negative times negative becomes positive. And on this side, negative times negative is 4x. Negative and positive is minus two. So that is my equation 2a. I'm going to call it 2a because I've got a two there. So now I can say substitute equation 2a into, since equation 2a is the same as equation two, I cannot substitute it to itself. I'm gonna say substitute it to equation one. So it means where I see x, that, where I see y, I must put four x minus two because I'm doing the substitution. So we have 2x 
plus 5y is equal to 12. 2x plus 5. My y is 4x minus 2 is equal to 12. Remove the bracket. 2x plus 5 times 4 is 20. 5 times 2 it's minus 10 is equal to 12. And I must move 10 to the other side. 2 plus 20 is 22x is equal to 12 plus 10, which is the same as 22x. Uh, and on the right hand side is 22 because 12 plus 10 is 22. Now I must get rid of 22. It means I must divide by 22 this side. I must divide by 22 that side. 22 and 22 cancel out. 22 and 22 goes one, one time, one time. So therefore x is equal to y. Now I have my value of x. I can then substitute x is equal to 1 into, I can substitute now into either equation 2a or 2. Remember, 2a and 2 are one and the same. So 2a was easy because it's already in the format that I need. So I'm going to substitute it to equation 2. 2a, 2a, not just 2, 2a, because 2a and 2 are the same thing. So we have y is equal to 4x minus 2. Therefore, y is equal to 4 times 1 minus 2. y is equal to 4 times 1 is 4 minus 2, which is equal to, I'm trying to leave space here for the graph, which will be equals to 2. So therefore, my coordinates, x and y, of 1 and 2. Let's draw the graph. Now, drawing the graph, at least equation number 2, I know what my y-intercept is. Let's change the pen, the color of my pen for this purpose. Let's use blue. So we know that for this equation, our y-intercept, which is our y-intercept, which I don't know what I can call it, but which will be the value that passes through the y-axis, uh, that is minus 2. So it means that graph passes through somewhere this side. If this is minus 1, this is minus 2, it passes through at this point. And we also know that the slope is positive. So slope is positive. So since the slope is positive, therefore it means the graph will move like that. So, but we also know that both these two graphs, one and two, they pass through x of one. So I must one, two, three. So if x of one, one, two, three, and y of 2, so therefore it means they pass through somewhere at that point. So I have, I don't have a ruler, so bear with me. If my line is crooked, it's fine. It's fine because everything is not to scale. It's just for demonstration purpose. So this is equation 4x minus y is equals to 2. So you should be able to identify it if they give you multiple graphs. So that will be that equation. Now let's do equation one. Sorry. Change my pen to green. I use the green now. So we come to this one. So as you can see this one, the, the equation is not in the format that we want. So you cannot take this number and say that is the value. So we need to also write it as for, uh, y is equal to 4x uh, ax plus b. Um, so this, if I rewrite it, it will be 5y is equal to 
minus 2x plus 12. And I know that this will divide by 5, and this will divide by 5, and therefore this side divide by 5, it will get rid of it. So I know that the slope of this is negative, so it means it go it, it's going this way. It's going this way somewhere. Um, and it passes through, what is 12 divided by 5? It's 2, 10, 2 over, over 5 in decimal. Let's see. Uh, 12 divided by 5. 12 divided by 5 is 2.4. So if this is 2, so it's somewhere it passes through somewhere there. Somewhere there. And I know that the other line is there. Anyway, because I'm, I'm not drawing it to scale, so it's fine. As long as you understand the concept that I'm trying to give you. And this is 2x plus 5y is equals to 12. And that's how you will identify your graph. So there is your graph for this multinous equations. So they are the two of them. And we know that both of them, they share one point. And that point is at that, let's go back to my red pen. We share that point there. Okay. And that is simultaneous equation. So now let's look at if we do method of substitution again, I think. So with this method of substitution, I want to substitute one equation to the other equation, but not the way I've done it. So I do have these two equations. So I must make both of them y is equals to ax plus b. Change them. We already changed them. You saw that, right? I did that. Remember? Yeah. So I don't have to explain it again. Oh, come on. I did equation number one, I changed it to y is equals to ax plus b. Equation two, we changed it to this. So it's the same thing that I'm trying to get to on the next slide. So you change both of them to y is equals to ax plus b. So they all need to look like y is equals to ax plus b. So therefore it means they both are equals to, so they all have y as a common. So I can take one equation and substitute it into the other equation as well. So I can make two, those two, two the, I can make these two equations equals to one another by substituting uh, into the second equation, I can substitute the y value of the first equation. And that's what I'm doing right here. So my first equation is the same as my second equation, which is equal to one another. And then I solve. Move 4x to the other side, then move 12 plus uh, 12 divided by 5 to the other side. And you will have minus 2 over 5x minus 4x is equal to minus 12 divided by 5 minus 2. And um, solve the equation, you will get minus... Uh, minus 22 because you simplify the fraction, right? The common factor between 4x and five. minus 2x over, it's 5. And then you say 5 goes how many times into 5? It goes 1 time. 1 times 2 is minus 2. Uh, 1 goes how many times into 5? It goes 5 times. 5 times 4 is 20. 20 minus 20 minus 2 is minus 22. And that's how I got minus 22. The same thing here, the answer will be 22 over 5. So it's minus 22 over 5. To get rid of minus 22 over 5, we can multiply by the inverse, multiply by negative 5 over 22. This side, you do the same, multiply by negative 5 over 22. This side, they both will cancel out. This will also cancel out. You will be left with, and negative and negative will be positive, and you will be left with, x is equals to 1. And 
we substitute x into the formula and we can choose any of the two equations because now we made both of them equal to one another. We can choose any one. You can choose equation one or equation two. Doesn't really matter. You choose any one of them to substitute the value of x of one so that you can find the value of y is equals to two. That is another method of substitution that you can use. Right. The last method that you can use is the method of elimination. With the method of elimination, it works different. Because we have two equations, you also need to label them equation one and equation two because you're going to tell yourself certain things that you, you need to refer back to. You want to make sure that one of these two equations can eliminate another equation and make sure that only on the left-hand side you are left with only one variable. Either you are left with an X or you are left with a Y. You cannot be having the two equations. So you can either divide equation number one into equation number two, or you can subtract equation number one from equation number two or vice versa. You need to make sure that one of those two equations subtract or divide or multiply or whatever it does. Make sure that you have one variable left. So here we have 2x plus 5 is equal to 12 and 4x minus y is equal to 2. So I've labeled them. The next step is to multiply equation 1 by equation 2. Oh, sorry, equation 1 by 2. So it means I'm going to make this equation double. So 2 multiplied by 2x is 4x. 2 multiplied by 10 is 10y. 12 multiplied by 2, sorry, 2 multiplied by 5 is 10y, and 12 multiplied by 2 is 24. Now, this is my equation 1a. With my equation 1a, I can eliminate equation 2 because at the moment, as it was, I couldn't do anything because even if I subtract or divide or multiply, I will still be left with 2 a variable x and y. So now if you look at equation 1a, which is now converted, I can subtract equation 2 from it. And that's equation 2. And I'm going to subtract equation 2 from equation 1a. So it means I'm just applying a minus there. So 4 minus 4x is 0. 10 minus minus y, it's plus 11 because that will be minus times minus, it's positive, so it will be 10 plus y is 11. 24 minus 2 is 22, and I'm left with y, uh, 11y is equal to 22. Oh, I don't know why it's there. 11y is equal to 22, and I can divide by 11 on this side, on the left-hand side, you divide by 11 on the right-hand side, and you will be left with 11 and 11 cancels out. You are left with y and 22 and 11. 11 goes two times into 22 and y is equal to 2. I don't know why my numbers are far right. They should be somewhere here. So, but yeah, the answer there, it will be y is equal to 2. And we can take y and substitute it into any of those three equations, it doesn't really matter. You can choose equation one or equation two to substitute. So we're taking equation one. So we substitute the value of y is equal to two into equation one. And two x plus five times two is equal to 12. And that gives us two x plus 10 is equal to 12. And moving 10 to the other side, we left with two x is equal to 12 minus 10. And the answer will be 12 minus 10 is 2, and we divide both sides by 2, and x will be equals to 1. So whether you use the method of substitution or the method of elimination, you should get the same answer. You can practice both methods and see which one you feel comfortable with when you go write your exams. You don't have to use both to solve. You just need to find the one that you feel comfortable with. And that is systems of linear equations. Any questions? 
and I can see that we run we running against time. So I have 30 minutes to do two sections, three sections. Let's see if I can. I can get that. Quadratic equations. So with quadratic equations. Because it looks at the relationship between two uh, variables, but it takes the ball curve shape, which the linear equation was y is equal to ax plus b. Quadratic equation has a square to it. The value of a can never be equal to zero because then when the value of a is zero, then it becomes a linear equation. So it's not a quadratic equation. So a quadratic equation should always have a square value on it. Okay, and the value that we, we, we <coughs> with quadratic equation, okay, sorry, with quadratic equation, you do not have to calculate the slope and all that, but you can calculate certain values, and I'm going to tell you just now. So with quadratic equation, A, B, and C are your constant values, so they will be given to you uh, to say, this is your quadratic equation, calculate the turning point, the x-intercepts, and so forth and so forth. So we do things differently. So at this point, BNU students, those who are doing pure BNU, you are excused. You can, if you want, you can leave. You can stay for 30 minutes until the end of the session. It's up to you. Quadratic functions. You need to know how to answer questions relating to quadratic uh, functions based on the value of a. If the value of a is greater than zero, we say that value is at minimum and the graph opens up. When the value of a is less than zero, we say it is at maximum and the graph opens down. So you need to remember this. Opposite. Less than means maximum means it doesn't mean smiley, it means sad. Less means sad. Maximum, let's, let's, let's take it this way. If the value of A is less than zero, therefore it means the temperature is very cold. And remember what the temp when the temperature is cold, how does it make you? It makes you feel sad, right? So you just need to remember that it, we know that the temperature is at maximum at that point or when it's very, very hot. Anyway, it doesn't really matter whether it's very, very cold or very, very hot. It's at maximum. It means it makes you sad. So you will always remember that, right? When the temperature is just fine, like it's greater than zero. So anyway, this time the temperature won't work. Uh, because here we're saying when it's greater than zero, so we need to find another way of, oh, let's, let's say the bank balance now. So when your bank balance is more than zero, you need to remember, oh no, it cannot work with the bank balance because when it's greater than zero, therefore the bank balance is not at minimum. Um, how, how will you remember this? I don't know how you will remember this, but you need to know that when it's uh, greater than zero, it is at minimum, or let's say you are at minimum of being bankrupt. So it, it, it needs to make you happy. Let's put it that way. So when A is positive, it means you are positive, you, your bank balance is positive. It's at minimum of you being broke. So you, it should make you happy, right? So you should remember that. So less than zero means happy because your bank balance is not low, it's not minimum. It makes you happy. When it is less than zero, think of a temperature. It is cold. It makes you sad. So let's remember that. Okay, so you can be asked to identify uh, whether the quadratic equation is at minimum or at maximum. Remember where you will see at minimum, maximum and minimum, you will just use the value of A. If the value of A, it's, le it's less than zero, 
if it's less than zero, it is at maximum, right? So when it's negative, we say it is at maximum because A is less than zero at that point. And therefore the graph will also be set. So you just need to remember that. So if the value of A is negative, what does that state? It means our A is less than, less than zero. It means our A is less than zero. And that's what I just said there. So, hmm. okay, so I've got, I'm just going to bring all of them up because I don't know why I didn't remove the animations. So in terms of quadratic equation, there are several things that you need to know and how uh, need to know how to calculate them. So the vertex, which is the turning point, the turning point, which is that point there where the graph turns, or if it's a set face, it will be that turning point will be at that point. That is the turning point is your vertex. And the formula is XM is equals to B minus B divided by 2A. And it also has the Y point. And the Y point, it is your original formula, which is AX squared plus BX plus C, depending on the formula that they give you. So let's say, for example, I'm going to go back one slide back. So if I'm given this, so I'm just going to use YM and my X, I'm going to change it to M. Because I would have calculated my vertex XM, which is minus B over 2A, I would have calculated this. I will take this value of my vertex, my X coordinate, and substitute it back into the formula. So that's what you will do with when you calculate the vertex or the turning point. And especially if they ask you to find the X and Y value of your of your vertex, you must remember that. Your Y intercept, it is where X is equal to zero, same way where X is equal to zero, Therefore, it means your C value, this is your vet, your Y intercept. Your X intercept, you calculate using these two formula. It's got the minus and the plus. Sometimes it's written like this. You need to be careful. <clears throat> the minus and the plus, the minus is for the minus side, the plus is for the positive side. But sometimes it can be both on the same minus side. It can be like this. What am I drawing now? It can be like this. They are both on the negative side, but you just need to know that one is the lower side and the other one is the upper side. Lower side, upper side. Lower side, upper side. Don't swap them because you will get some of the questions that has both of the values swapped around. You just need to always make sure that you always say minus and plus regardless of whether you draw it on that side or this side, minus and plus. The minus first plus the second. Before you calculate your x-intercept, you need to evaluate your discriminant, which is this value. You need to calculate the value underneath the square root first. Before you can calculate whether you have two intercepts or one intercept, the reason for that is if your discriminant is greater than zero, then you can calculate both of those two x, x intercepts. If your discriminant is equals to zero, therefore it means if this is equal to zero, you can see that this one exists and this formula is the same as your vertex. And if you have calculated the vertex, therefore it means it is the same as the vertex. If it is less than, if it's less than zero, if you calculate this value and you find that it is negative, when it's negative, then there are no intercepts. So it means this graph never touches. So let's let's start with this first one. So the first one it says, if it is 
uh, if it is greater than zero, the vertex is greater than zero, therefore you will have two X intercepts. So you will have two X intercepts on all of these graphs that I have in front of you. There are two X intercepts. So there and there, right? If it is equals to zero, when it's equals to zero, therefore it means your you have only one turning point. So it means your graph touches your y your x axis at one point. Even if it comes from the bottom, it will go only at one point, regardless. Number three, which is that one, when it is negative. Therefore, it means your graph never touches the x axis anywhere. So your graph will look like that or it can look like that. Because it doesn't touch the y axis anywhere or it can look like this. I don't know how to draw. I failed at drawing at school, so. So that will be your graph will look like that. So let's look at an example. A pool is treated with a chemical and this treatment follows a quadratic function and they gave us the quadratic function. Come on, I always forget to fix my slides. This is a minus, the minus is at the top. So I can rewrite this equation into the normally quadratic equation because we know that the quadratic equation is y is equals to a x squared plus b x plus c because i can multiply remove the bracket multiply 30 times t 30t times t is 30t squared 30t times minus 10 is 300t squared plus 700 now because if I need to solve this, I need to find what is my value of A, what is my value of B, and what is my value of C. You need to define that. So A is 30 in this instance, and B, you take the sign as well, which is minus 300. Don't leave the sign. And C is 750. In order for me to calculate the vertex, which was because I see that my a is 30, which is greater than zero. So therefore it means my amount of algae is at minimum. Remember when it's greater than zero, it's at minimum. Um, so I can calculate my vertex and I know the formula for the vertex is uh, here we using T not X. So if I was using X, this will be X. So T is equals to minus minus B divided by 2A because the formula has a negative and my B has a negative. So it's minus minus 300 divided by 2 times A is 30 substitute minus times minus is positive 300. 2 times 30 is 60. 300 divided by 60 is 5. So the amount of algae will be at minimum after five days. I need to calculate my Y vertex. My y vertex, because yeah, I've got my x vertex. I need to calculate my coordinate. So I've calculated my xm. And now I need to calculate my ym. Take the same formula and substitute where I see t, because now my t is five days. Where I see t, I'm going to put five days. So my at, which is five, is equal to 30 t squared, which is 5 squared, minus 300 t, which is 5, 300 times 5, plus 700. And you solve the equation, you will find that it's equal to 0. If I need to calculate my x intercept, I need to first evaluate the discriminant in order for me to first find out whether I need to calculate my x intercept. So, calculating my x intercept or my discriminant, 
B is minus 300 squared, minus 4 times A is 30, C times is 750, and if you solve this, minus 300 squared is 90,000, 4 times 30 times 750, I think probably it will give you 90,000, and the answer is zero. And what do we know? If the discriminant is equals to zero, then therefore it means I've already calculated my turning point, it's five. And you can draw the graph if you want to draw the graph by using your turning point and your y-intercept. So if I have to draw the graph, my y-intercept is 750. So let's assume that there is 750 of my y-intercept and my Turning point, it is 5 and 0. So where y is 0, 5 and x is 5. So let's assume that 5 is somewhere here because of my graph. I can assume that this is 5 and I can draw the graph like this. Okay, maybe probably my 5 is here. And there is your graph to scale. <laughs> Okay, so that is uh, that is quadratic equation. So we won't find time to do the others. Let's assume that they gave us this question in the exam. So consider the quadratic function below. Choose the correct graph. So here we need to identify what is the value of A. A will tell us whether the graph opens up or opens down. So the value of A here, it is less than zero because it's negative. So therefore it is at maximum. And when it's at maximum, it makes me sad. It makes me sad. So my graph should look like that. So process of elimination, this will not be the graph and this will not be the graph because already I've looked at the value of A. The next one is to look at the value of my y-intercept. The value of my y-intercept will tell me whether the graph passes through the y-axis on the positive or the negative. So I can try it. Quick, quick, it passes through at y axis at positive three. So that passes at positive three at positive three. That does not solve our problem. We need to solve our problem by looking at the turning point. So let's look at the turning point. What is the value of A? What is the value of B? What is the value of C? A is minus one, B is minus two, C is three. X is equals to, X is equals to minus B divided by two A minus minus two divided by two times A of minus one therefore I have 2 divided by minus 2, which is minus 1. That does not help me because there is my, oh, it does help me, actually. X should be in the negative side. X on this side is on the positive side. So therefore, through my process of elimination, this also is not correct. So my answer is option 2. If they both were on the negative side, like for example, this one is on the negative side, your X is on the negative side, then you're going to calculate your YM, because this is XM, and you're just going to substitute the value of negative one into minus negative one squared, minus two times negative one, plus three, which will be negative one, plus two, plus three, which is minus two plus one is one plus three is four. So we know that y will be positive and this one, the y is in the negative. 
and so forth. And that's how you will do your process of elimination when you're looking at the graph. Can I have your permission to continue until 8 o'clock? You tell me. Before we do that, let's do this. Do I have your permission? You need to tell me now because me, I can go and sleep right now. Do I have your permission? Please make sure that you complete the register as well. Let's see. Let me copy the register. Nobody wants to say anything, so I can stop right there, right there. I can. Are you guys all right if we go on until 8 o'clock? It's only an additional 30 minutes. No? Okay. Okay, I'm um, okay. Thank you, Courtney, uh, for saving the rest of the group. Uh, okay, let's continue. So that is a quadratic equation, and I'm going to stop right here with quadratic equation because I think I've covered almost most of the things. Now we can move on to systems of linear inequalities with systems of linear inequalities we don't have equal sign so it means one side is not equal to the other it might be bigger than or equal or it might be less than or equal so it's inequalities so we're going to first look at when we're solving equation with only one variable. So it means when we are given X or we are given Y on its own, and we need to solve this equation of linear inequalities. When solving the equations, you must remember, if you multiply or divide by a negative number, the sign will change. So if you had minus 2y it's less than 4. If you have it like this and you're going to divide here by negative 2, you don't do that because your sign needs to change. So you say so that you don't get confused, you're going to say negative 2y divide by negative 2 and then you change the sign and you say 4. That is why you cannot leave anything with a variable on your right hand side. It's very important that you move everything with a variable to your left hand side. So always move your variables to your left hand side. So when you divide by a negative number, the sign change. Or when you have negative y is equal to 4, because it's multiplying here yeah, and you want to divide, you want to multiply by a negative, you're going to say, oh, why am I putting equal? Not equal. Let's say it's greater than. You're going to say negative y, negative y, but then you're going to change the sign because the sign was greater than because you are multiplying. So this side you were dividing. The side we multi, we are multiplying. Because we're multiplying by a negative number, the sign also changes. And then it becomes y is less than negative 4. Always remember that. That is very important. Right. Let's assume that we need to solve the following equation. Also, remember that whatever you do on the left, you must do on the left. Whatever you do on the right, must do on the right. Or otherwise, when you move things across the equal inequality side, the sign will change as well. What I'm not going to cover as well is weight problems of inequalities. Probably when we do the exam preparation, I will bring some of those questions to the front especially the ones with weight problems when it comes to inequalities. Okay, 
So if we need to solve for A, then we need to move everything with an A to the left hand side. The left hand side is very important. So we move 4a to the left hand side. Whatever I do on the left, I must do on the right. I must subtract 4a, subtract 4a. And I'll be left with minus 6a on the left and 4 on the right because 4a and 4a will cancel out or they will be equals to 0, which leaves me 4a. I'm going to divide by negative 6 because I'm looking for a. I'm solving for a, not negative 6. So because I am I'm going to divide by a negative number, my sign will change. It is greater than, it becomes less than. Divide by negative six, divide by negative six on the right hand side as well. Six and six will cancel, negative and negative is positive. <clears throat> Two goes into four, two times and it goes into six, three times, and the answer will be negative two over three. So A will be negative two over three as the answer. And that's how you will solve systems of linear equalities. <clears throat> now, with linear equalities as well, you can be asked to use the number line to answer some of the questions. What do I mean? Which one of the following graphs represent the solution to linear inequalities? Now, you need to remember the following. When your sign, I'm going to start with the sign. When the sign is greater than or greater than or equal, right? When the sign is greater than or greater than or equal, therefore, the arrow will point oh, the arrow will point to the right when it's greater than or greater than or equal when it is less than or less than an equal the arrow will point to the left because it points to the less than so it says the values less than the values that are below Right. That is the error. Then we have a dot. When the sign is greater than or it's less than. When it's greater than or the sign is less than and it does not have the equal sign to it. The sign, the dot will be open. Because it says it does not include that point. When it is greater than or equal and less than or equal, then the, the circle will be solid. Right. Always remember that. Ne? So which one of the following graph represent this linear inequality. The first thing you need to do is solve this equation. So let's first solve the equation. We have 2x. We have 2x plus 9 is greater than 3x plus 17. And we move 3x to the other side, 2x minus 3x it's greater than 17 minus 9, and we solve this. 2x minus 3x, it's minus x, greater than 17 minus 9. If my mind was still fresh, 8 o'clock in the morning, I will know what 17 minus 9 is. Is 8. I need to remove the negative, so it means I can multiply or divide by a negative number. So when I multiply by a negative number, my sign change from greater than to a less than. And therefore, x is equals to minus 8. What this? Oh, not equal. x is less than minus 8. What that means, it says the value of x is any value that is less than 
negative 8. It does not include negative 8. How do we represent that value? Now we first look at the sign. What is the sign? The sign, it's less than, so therefore it means the circle needs to be open. Closed, closed, closed. It is not the answer. The answer is option number two. Process of elimination. Let's assume now that this one was also open. Let's assume that this is also open. Then it means the two of them are still qualifying. We know that we eliminated number one and number three. We're assuming that this one also is open, right? So when we assume that, it means there is additional thing that we need to know. What do we know? The arrow. The arrow, where must it point? Because it says less than, the arrow needs to point to the left. So the arrow needs to go there because it is less than. So this would also be eliminated as such. And the only answer here will be option number two. That's how you will use the process of elimination when answering questions relating to systems of linear equalities. There are several ex exercises. I've uploaded already the notes for today so you can go through the additional exercises that I have after you've went through the video and you can practice with those ones. Most of the questions comes from the past exam papers. I did not recreate anything. I don't come up with new questions. I just use your material so you can use them to practice. That is system of linear equality when we have only one variable. Do you have any question before I move? Because the same concept that we just learned right now, we're going to apply it to the next section. Are there any question? Is there still something that we don't understand? OK, so it means you understand everything. I just explained. Remember the arrow? Remember the dot? but we're going to use different things, but the same concept, we're still going to take it um, into consideration. With systems of simultaneous linear inequalities, it means we are now given two equations with two variables, which complicates our life. But it's easy to do the same way as we've learned with simultaneous equations for linear equalities, we're looking for x and y but with inequalities we're not only looking at the point x and y we're not only looking at which point both of these two equations pass through we are also looking at the area that they both share the values of their areas they both share so how do we do that To solve the equations of uh, linear inequalities, especially when you have two variables, the easiest way to do that is to use a graph. It's not like finding the simultaneous equation and doing the method of elimination and the method of substitution. No, we use the graph. Now, when we use the graph, it's the same thing. We still need to, we still aim to find the x and y coordinates, which is the one point that both of these two equations share or satisfy. But also, we also need the area that satisfies both of these two systems. Now, how do we do that? And this is the process that you need to remember always. You're going to use it for the during your process of elimination the first step you do is make sure that the lines or the equations you change the sign if it was less than or equal or greater than or equal it doesn't really matter you change it to an equal sign so that you can treat it as a system of linear equation because when it is a system of linear equations, it makes it easy for you to find 
your y-intercept, which will tell you where the graph passes through the x-axis. So we just, for that purpose, for us to find where the graph passes through the y-axis, we just need to change the sign to an equal sign. Step number two, we need to also to differentiate based on the original sign, because remember in step number one, we say change the sign. We, we change the sign for that purpose only to make, to find our y-intercept. So we change the sign to find the y-intercept. And then once we have found the y-intercept, then we go back to our original function, which has the side of less than or equal or greater than or equal, or you can replace it back. Now, once you have changed the, the sign, you can then now determine whether the line that you will draw that will pass through the y-intercept, is it going to be a dotted line or a solid line? And that is based on the equality sign. If it's greater than or equal or less than or equal, the line will be a solid line. So it means it will be hard. It will be a solid line. If it is less than or, le or greater than, the line will be a dotted line, which we call it a reference line. So you just need to remember that. Right? Easy, right? last thing we also need to know is which area they both share. Based on the lines, it will tell you whether the shading should be above the line or below the line. So here is the scenario. You will have X and Y. If it is a positive slope, that is the other thing why we change it back to um, the Y to also identify whether we have a positive or a negative slope as well. If it is a positive slope, this will be above, this is above, and this is below. If it is a negative, this is above, and this is below. This is above, and this is below. Now, what do I mean by above and below, above and below? When I mean above, it means when the sign is less than or greater or less than or equal, it will be below. So this will be below, less than, or it can be less, less than or equal or less than or equal. If it's above, it will be greater than or equal, greater than or equal. So it means we're going to shade this side or shade this side, and we can see that both of these two lines share that area. And that's how we will define our graph. Those are the three things that you need to remember, right? You got it? When it's less than or equal or greater than or equal, it's a solid line. When it is less than or equal or less than, it is below. I wrote this thing wrong. This should be above. Sorry, my bad. That should be above. Above. So let's look at an example of how we do this, how we identify this. So I have two graphs, x minus y, oh, minus x plus y minus one is less than or equals to zero, and two x plus y minus four is less than or equals to zero. Now, this does not help me much because it is not even in the format y is equal to mx plus c or, or something like that. So. That's where step number one comes in. So we're going to do step number one for one. So I'll do step number one. Change this, sorry, this equation to an equal sign. 
So we say minus X plus Y. Plus Y minus one is equals to zero. And I move everything except Y to the other side. So this will be Y is equals to X minus one. So this is step number one. So that tells me my Y intercept. Y intercept is minus one. I'm happy with that. My slope is positive because it's positive one. So it means my graph should actually go like this. It must slide like that. So step number one, done. Step number two, it says I must go back. Remember, go back to my equation and look at the sign. What does the sign say? The sign says it is less than so my sign is less than or equal. And what does that mean? That means my line is solid in terms of the line. Step number three, what does that mean in terms of the area? It is less than or equal. So therefore it means the value should be below because it's less than. So I'm done. With number one, let's go to number two. Number two, we do the same. Step one, we change the equal sign or the equality sign to equal. So it's 2x plus y minus 4. It's less than, or not less than. We change it to equal sign. So y is equals to moving minus 2x plus 4. So I know what my y-intercept is. My y-intercept is positive 4. So it means it passes through my y-axis at 4. But my slope is negative. So it means my graph should look like this. Step number 2, the sign is a less than so it means a dotted line and my sign is a less than so therefore it means they are the points are below so let's draw that magic two 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 i drew it and there is our graph <laughs> I drew our graph. So, because I, you are not going to be asked to draw a graph, they will give you the graph so you can just use your graphs to determine whatever the values you are looking for or to respond to that. So, if we were going to solve this as a simultaneous equation, we would find that the point they both meet at, it's at that point. They already defined that. So, now in the exam, you're going to choose, they will give you four plots. You just need to make sure that you understand how to identify each one of them. So let's see if we can identify our graph. So the first one, our y-intercept is minus one, minus one. Uh, is it minus one or positive one? Uh, I wrote it wrong. It's positive one because it's minus there. It should not be negative one. It should be positive one. So because minus it's y minus one. So when you move it this side, it should be positive. So it's one. So our graph number one should pass through our y intercept at one. So let's see. There is our. Oh, come on. Work with me. There is our one. What else do we know? We know that the graph should be a positive. Remember how we identify the graph. So this is our graph. We are able to identify that part. Is the line solid? Yes, so you can see that the line is solid. It's not dotted. Are the points below? So the points are those lines. They are below the line. Remember when I did the demonstration, below means below the line. Then we have identified our first equation. Let's go to our second equation. Our y-intercept, 
is positive four. So let's see if it passes through four. What do we also know? The slope, we said it should look like, like this, and it does surely looks like that. And it should be a dotted line, and for sure it's a dotted line, and the point should be below the line. And remember, this is above, so below the line will be those values, the lines below. Now, where are the two areas that both of these two graphs share? This is the area where they both share. So not there, not there. So let's look at the example that you will see in the exam. This is the example. Now, you need to look at your three graphs and identify which one is which. So we use the process of elimination. Now, you remember that I gave you the three steps. You don't have to do them in order. You can start from the bottom and go up. So I like to stop to start with the dotted line or solid line. Let's start with that one. Let's define each one of them. Looking at the sign, is this a dotted line or a solid line? It will be a solid line. So this one is solid line. Number two, this is a dotted line or a solid line. It's a solid line because it's got an equal sign to it. This one does not have an equal sign, so therefore it will be a dotted line. So number one, done. Number two, I can define whether the values will be below or above. I don't have to look at the graph as yet. I'm just collating the information I need to enable me to look at the graph and do the process of elimination, right? So we go. Number one, it says greater than, so therefore it means they should be above. Number two, they should be above. Number three, it says less than, so they should be below. So step number two and three, done. Let's go to step number one. Step number one says I must change all these graphs and make them y is equals to axb. So let's do that. Let's change this first one. So we're going to start with the first one, which is 2y plus 5x is equals to 10. And we say here, what do we say here? 2y is equals to minus 5x plus 10. So therefore, y is equals to minus 5 over 2x plus 10 divided by 2, it's 5. I already calculated that because it's I'm dividing by 5 everywhere. Or oh, why did I divide by 2 there? You guys, you must say, wake up. Uh, so divide, no, we divide by 2. Yes, it's right. We divide by 2. So my intercept, or I can come back here, my y intercept is 5. So it means that graph should pass through uh, the y-axis. Anywhere on the y-axis, it must pass through 5. And my slope, let's write the slope here. The slope is negative, so it means my graph should look like this, should go like that. Let's do number 2. Number 2 says 3y minus 2x is equals to 6. Uh, 3y is equals to 2x plus 6 and divide by 3. y is equals to 2 over 3x plus 6 divided by 3 is 2. I have my y intercept of positive 2, so it means it must pass through the y axis at 2, and my slope is positive, so it means this graph needs to look like this. Right, the last one, which is the easy one, it says y is equals to 4, which makes life easy. It says my y intercept, my y intercept is 4. My y intercept is 4. What is my slope? I don't have a slope. 
So therefore it means the line will just pass through the y axis at the constant because I don't have x axis. It, has, it will not touch the y, the x axis anywhere. So it will just be a line there. So it will just be flat like this because this is just the y values. If it was x is equals to four, then it will be like this. This is for y. The y, it will just be horizontal like that, not vertical. OK, so now let's answer the question using the process of elimination. But the lucky enough is that all these graphs are labeled 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. So but we can start here. We're looking for graph number one. It needs to pass through the y axis at five. There, there is one that passes at five. And the slope needs to be like that. And it needs to be a solid line. And the values needs to be above. Above is here. So we can eliminate that graph already using only number one. Number one, we already eliminated our graph. Uh, let's look at number two. Number two, the slope should pass through the solid line. It looks like a dotted line, but I'm going to take it as a solid line. You can see that it's a solid. Uh, the graph should look like this, yes. And the value should be above. Above is here. So we eliminated that one. So still on number one. We haven't even looked at number two, number three, number four, and all that. 